There's a lot of things I wish beginner harmonica players knew. The biggest one is the importance of slowing down. I mean this both in a literal way, but in a mindset way as well. Hopefully this video will teach you the benefits of slowing down and maybe it will be a bit of a perspective changer for you. So let's get into it. A lot of what I'm gonna be talking about today has to do with practice. If you wanna learn exactly how I suggest you practice, then check out my free Harmonica Accelerator workshop. The link is down below in the description. It's really hard to learn how to play harmonica. Not only do you have to understand it on an intellectual level, but you also need to develop muscle memory. Everything relies on your muscle memory. Playing single notes, moving around the harp accurately, bending, overblowing, learning songs, learning riffs, it's all muscle memory. When I get a new student, this is what I usually see. They have been playing for a while, they've tried a lot of things, maybe learned lots of snippets of songs and jams on YouTube, but their skills are just not working how they should mechanically. In almost every case, it's an issue of speed. Either everything that they learn is too fast and they're not keeping up, and so they don't retain any of that information, or everything that they try to practice is done in such a frantic, anxious, and frustrated way that they don't actually move forward. We sit down together and I try to get them to slow down, to focus on what really matters. And in most cases, I definitely see benefits from that. So let's say you're playing a new song. You get set up with the tabs and the recording and you start working through the notes. So far, so good, right? The problem is that most students are trying to play the tune at full speed right from the start. If you do that, it's really hard to pick up on the stuff that matters, like the rhythm and the techniques, the overall expression, the dynamics. So you'll skip all of that, just play the notes, and you feel accomplished. You get that sweet dopamine boost of feeling like you learned a new thing. But the problem is you didn't actually move forward. There's nothing wrong with this per se, it's just you're not actually retaining a lot of what you're spending your time on. And if you go slower, I think you will. What I'm trying to say is, if you want your song and riff learning sessions to actually help you, you need to make sure you don't move on so quickly and that you have the time to absorb everything that the song is teaching you. The easiest way to change this is to not learn the song at full speed slow it down and break it into bite-sized pieces and learn each section fully. There are easy ways to approach this from simply using a metronome at a lower speed than the song or loading your song into a transcription program like AnyTune, which I really like. And just so you know, this is the case for every musician. Every musician has to deal with this. As an example, every year around Christmas, my wife works on playing some piano Christmas songs. Recently, she got a harder level book than she is normally used to, and she tried to work through it, and things weren't sounding great. Here's what made the difference though. She slowed down, she used a metronome, and she focused on specific parts of the song, and even tried one hand at a time and put them together later on. Eventually, slowing down like this helped her actually master her new songs. Not only did she slow down literally, which helped her develop the muscle memory, but she also relaxed her mindset overall and decided to take her time and really enjoy the process and learn the whole thing, not just the quick abbreviated version of it. If this is helping you, I do have more to say, but for now, could you click the like button? It takes a lot of effort to make these videos and I don't want it to die just because y'all didn't click the button. So do me that small favor and let's move on. Literally slowing the music is one way of using this concept, but the other is to relax your mindset and your approach to learning as a whole. Let's go take a look at a few more examples. Let's talk about bending next. When I see students practicing their bends, it usually looks something like this. They got their harmonica in one hand, they got their phone in the other hand with like a bending tuner app. And it sounds like this.
there's a lot of weird faces being made. But the big thing that I'm taking away from this after seeing people go through this over and over is that they are just trying to get one specific result. They're looking at their phone is telling them that they're not successful and they get frustrated and they work on one bend for, you know, maybe a minute or two. They get annoyed and then they move to another one. And the result of doing this is that they don't learn any of them. Instead, I suggest you take a different approach. First, ditch the tuner and use a drone. Drone tracks are a track that has a single note played out for a long time. I personally really like the cello drone tracks that are available on YouTube. You can find them if you just type in cello drone and then the note like cello drone A. Now, when I teach bending with my private students, I don't use a tuner generally. I put on a drone track and I choose the note of the drone to be the one that they're bending to. So let's say they were working on the major pentatonic scale. You're trying to hit three whole step draw bend like this. What I would do is I'd put a drone on in the same note that they're trying to bend to. So I would put on a drone in A and then I tell them to just relax, take the full length of the drone track, six to 10 minutes or whatever it is take their time and just slowly practicing bending this one note over and over. It sounds like this. Playing with drones is actually kind of relaxing, but more importantly, it works. Instead of trying to bend over and over, trying different holes, jumping around, looking at your tuner, getting frustrated, you just slow down, have the drone playing, you hit your bend and you hold it. Being able to really focus on one bend will help you develop your muscle memory and letting yourself slow down removes a lot of the pressure, which just gives you the space to actually think about what you're doing, adjust and develop that proper muscle memory. I also witnessed this kind of rushing feeling with improvising. Beginners improvise in a fast and messy way. They don't really know what they're doing. They just play mostly random notes and that might be you and it's okay. Instead, I suggest you slow things down so you can actually develop loops and build up your ideas. Now, I'm not suggesting that you slow a backing track down, though I suppose you could do that. I am suggesting that you do some improvising practice where time doesn't matter so much and there's not as much of a reason to rush through things. For this, I would choose simple backing tracks with only a few chords at lower tempos. When you start to play, just take it easy, take breaks, stop when you're playing and think about what you're doing. If you're gonna play the blues, try to play a slow blues instead of a fast Chicago blues. It'll let you really hear all of the chord changes and follow along. I also really like improvising over you guessed it, drone tracks. They are really nice to get the hang of improvising and I find the feeling of listening to a drone and soling over it to be very meditative, kind of like listening to a binaural beat or something. You put the drone on in the key of your scale and you just relax and see what you can play. Here's what it would sound like. There's more suggestions I can make, but it really boils down to this. You can't learn when you are in a rush. If you can relax and take things slowly, you'll actually learn much faster. I hope this helps. I'll see you next time. Peace.